All right, guys, it's time for our five o'clock read aloud. <clears throat> this is an interesting take on a familiar fairy tale. Instead of the three little pigs, this story is called The Three Little Wolves and the Big Bad Pig. Mm, interesting concept. <clears throat> this story is by Eugene Trevisas. Sorry if I butchered that. And then also Helen Oxenbury contributed as well. I'm not sure if they both illustrated and wrote the book, but those are the two contributors to this Scholastic story. <clears throat> Thanks again to Scholastic. As I've been saying these <clears throat> past couple months for letting us read these books aloud. Oh. Once upon a time, there were three cuddly little wolves with soft fur and fluffy tails who lived with their mother. The first was black, the second was gray, and the third was white. One day, the mother called the three little wolves around her and said, My children, it is time for you to go out into the world. Go and build a house for yourselves, but beware of the big, bad pig. Don't worry, mother. We will watch out for him, said the three little wolves, and they set off. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Soon they met a kangaroo. Here, there we go. Who was pushing a wheelbarrow full of red and yellow bricks? Please, will you give us some of your bricks? asked the three little wolves. Certainly, said the kangaroo, and she gave them lots of red and yellow bricks. So the three wo little wolves built themselves a house of bricks. Are you already noticing a difference from the original story? Mm. <clears throat> oh no. The very next day, the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of bricks that the little wolves had built. The three little wolves were playing croquet in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside the house and locked the door. These three little wolves seem pretty smart. Do you see him on the prowl in the background in the woods? Look at the house they built in one day. Holy smokes. It's already decorated and everything. The pig knocked on the door and grunted, Little wolves, little wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed. But the house didn't fall down. Look, though, he was still able to move some bricks. That is a strong breath. It's kind of concaving there. <clears throat> oh, no, guys. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his sledgehammer, and he knocked the house down. Uh-oh. Only the three little wolves only just managed to escape before the bricks crumbled, and they were very frightened indeed. Oh, at least he has his china teapot. Can you see that all right? I feel like I keep moving my laptop, sorry. We shall have to build a stronger house, they said. Just then they saw a beaver who was mixing concrete in a concrete mixer. Please, will you give us some of your concrete? asked the three little wolves. Certainly, said the beaver, and he gave them buckets and buckets full of messy, slurry 
concrete. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of concrete. They are hard workers. I wonder if their new house will be furnished as well in a day. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> no sooner had they finished than the big bad pig came crowling, to, crowling down the road and saw the house of concrete that made the little wolves that the little wolves had built. Sorry. They were playing battle door and shuttlecock in the garden. And when they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house and shut the door. The pig rang the bell and said, Little frightened wolves, come let me in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china pot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed. But the house didn't fall down. wonder why he always tries with the breathing. It hasn't seemed to work since the beginning of this story. These are the games they were playing. That looks like a fortress, doesn't it? Oh no, guys. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his pneumatic drill and smashed the house down. Goodness. The three little wolves managed to escape, but their chinny chin chins were trembling and trembling and trembling. How traumatic. We shall build an even stronger house, they said, because they were very determined. Just then they saw a truck coming down the road, carrying barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. Please, will you give us some of your barbed wire, a few iron bars, and armor plates, and some heavy metal padlocks, they said to the rhinoceros who was driving the truck. Sure, said the rhinoceros, and he gave them plenty of barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. He also gave them some plexiglass and some reinforced steel chains, because he was a generous and kind-hearted rhinoceros. So the three little wolves built themselves an extremely strong house. It was the strongest, securest house one could possibly imagine. They felt absolutely safe. Ooh. Looks pretty safe to me. Oh, the rhinoceros is helping them. He is a kind-hearted and generous rhinoceros. <clears throat> The next day, the big, bad pig came prowling along the road as usual. The three little wolves were playing hopscotch in the garden. When they saw the big, bad pig coming, they ran inside their house, bolted the door, and locked all the 37 padlocks. The pig dialed the video entrance phone call, or the video entrance phone, and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chins, let me come in. Looks like he hopped the bob barbed wired fence. Look at the little wolves, they're so scared. No, 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 said the little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china pot. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. Hasn't worked the past two times, you think it'll work this time? So he huffed, and he puffed, 
and he puffed and he huffed. But the house did not fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He brought some dynamite, laid it against the house, lit the fuse, and my goodness. Look at the dynamite. He definitely is big and bad. Oh, guys. The house blew up. The three little wolves just managed to escape with their fluffy tails scorched. Whoa. Here's the big bad pig. And here are the three little wolves, thankfully, with their china pot, china teapot. All right, they've built three houses. What on earth could they do next? Something must be wrong with our building materials, they said. We have to try something different, but what? At that moment, they saw a flamingo coming down and pushing a wheelbarrow full of flowers. Please, will you give us some flowers? asked the little wolves. With pleasure, said the flamingo, and he gave them lots and lots of flowers. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of flowers. Hmm, they're taking quite a different approach this time. wonder what made them think that flowers would work. Looks beautiful, though. Don't know how well that would protect you from rain. <laughs> One wall was of marigolds, one of daffodils, one of pink roses, and one of cherry blossoms. The ceiling was made of sunflowers, and the floor was a carpet of daisies. They had water lilies in their bathtub and buttercups in their refrigerator. It was a rather fragile house, and it swayed in the wind, but it was very beautiful. The next day, who do you think came along? It was the big bad pig. He came prowling down the road and saw the, saw the house made of flowers that the three little wolves had built. He rang the bluebell at the door and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chins and the scorched tails, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. It's okay, Stella. But as he took a deep breath, ready to huff and puff, he smelled the soft scent of the flowers. It was fantastic. And because the scent of the and because the scent was so lovely, the pig took another breath and then another. And instead of huffing and puffing, he began to sniff. He sniffed deeper and deeper until he was quite filled with the fragrant scent. His heart grew tender and he realized how horrible he had been. Right then, he decided to become a big, good wolf. Sorry, a g big, good pig. He started to sing and dance the tarantella. <coughs> Stella! <laughs> hmm. At first, the three little wolves were a bit worried. It might be a trick, but soon they realized that the pig had truly changed. So they came running out of the house. They started playing games with him. First, they played pig pog and then piggy in the middle. And when they were all tired, they invited him into the house. 
What's going to happen? They offered him tea and strawberries and wolfberries and asked him to stay with them as long as he wanted. The pig accepted and they all lived together happily ever after. I hope you enjoyed the three little wolves and the big bad pig. Quite a bit different from the original story, right? Such a sweet ending in comparison to the other versions I've read. So I hope you have a fantastic night. I hope that you enjoyed this, and I will see you tomorrow. We'll finish um, our story, uh, Lily and Miss Liberty, and I have a fun um, special activity with Mrs. Keller tomorrow for us to do, so check that out as well. Have a great night. Love you. Miss you. Bye.